just brought this home yesterday. It's a Craftsman LT 1500. Uh, I think that's a 17 horse motor. I'm not sure because the, the top is or the label has been removed. Anyhow, it wouldn't start. And the first thing I did was check the starter. I just uh, put a battery across the, the starter and it was spinning in the wrong direction. It's actually, whenever it would spin, it would pull the gear down instead of pushing it up. So, uh, I don't know why that was doing that, but uh, I took the, the uh, starter apart and rotated the brushes 90 degrees. And now it is uh, actually spinning in the right direction, which forces this gear up into the spins the in the clockwise or spins the flywheel in a clockwise direction which is what it's supposed to do uh still won't start though battery's disconnected uh, i always take off the negative post first uh, daddy taught me that if you take the positive post off there's a chance your wrench might touch ground and uh, fry your wrench or could be also your watch band or something so anyhow I always take the negative post off first Let's see if we can wrestle this out of there without too much trouble. Okay, that's out of the way. And while I'm troubleshooting, I'll just put the battery over here in the corner and uh, let it do a, uh, on the battery tender, do a little charging. Let's see, this guy is May 21, and today is June of 22, so the battery's only one year old. Okay, to gain access to the, uh, the solenoid, which is hiding right over there behind this bracket, I've got to take the battery out and there's uh, the battery holder so I can actually reach up in there. That's pretty easy to just press fit in there. So, okay, let's see. Still not a whole lot of room. Maybe I'll just. Uh, Take the bolt out of it, hang it down so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, there's two bolts holding it on. Uh, that's a 3 8 socket for me. Uh, okay, that was not fun. I don't recommend it. That bracket is uh, very hard to pull over the top of the, the uh, back rail back here. So it's probably a lot easier just to pull the wires off and check for continuity uh, and only change the solenoid if that it is what's bad okay I got one end of that meter tied to the starter cable and okay so I'm getting continuity back to the solenoid on the 12 volts so I've got continuity from the solenoid over to the starter and I'm seeing one major problem right there. That's probably not a good indicator, but uh, it does look like it's making a connection, but a damn poor one. I'm going to replace that right now. Well, that was just holding on by like two strands. So I, I think it's time to change. All right. Uh, I crimped it. Then soldered it and crimped it again. I think it'll be okay now. And on to another issue. Look what I found here is this wire is going to one side of the fuse. Looks like somebody has patched in. Uh, it goes nowhere. So I've got to find out where that went and, <laughs> and where it's going. So stay tuned. Okay, testing the green wire. This goes to the uh, one side of the solenoid, and that's supposed to be ground. And I can hear that it's ground. There we go. That is ground. So that wire is okay. Okay, checking the solenoid itself, and it is. Come on. About 12 ohms. All right, got that wired back up, and I think uh, I'm going to hook the battery back up and uh, just jump the uh, positive terminal of the uh, solenoid to see if I can't get the solenoid to pick, just to verify that the solenoid is working. 
and if it is working then I should hear the starter uh, try to turn now there's a multitude of problems here uh, first the uh, the starter would uh, spin in the right direction I fixed that then I found this cable here was burnt almost in two so I fixed that and I got it back together and tried picking the, the uh, solenoid and it'll click just a little bit but it won't fully engage and I've got two batteries on here so I know I'm getting enough current to pick that solenoid so in addition to the starter spinning backwards and the cable burnt in half the solenoid's no good so I'm gonna have to order a new solenoid for this now I got this thing over here on the base you can see that the terminal for the uh, battery is melted so this thing's been overheated uh, probably severely and that's probably why the relay won't pick anymore uh, so new one on order uh, Amazon said will be here tomorrow but meanwhile I'm going to dig into the rest of the mower and see what's going on with that okay the uh, the safety switches that uh, that allow this thing to start uh, are in series uh, it starts at the the uh, the fuse positive lead goes through the fuse up to the ignition and then from the ignition to the brake switch from the brake switch to the uh, clutch switch on the blade so if all of those are working correctly and everything is wired you should be able to measure continuity from the the fuse the positive side of the fuse to the uh, positive side of the starter solenoid so that's the orange wire here that's the red wire here so when that uh, uh, have continuity when you're ready to start that should uh, be a continuous circuit so this thing should beep whenever uh, I hit the starter switch so uh, but you got to hold a brake down at the same time, so I got to uh, have four hands in order to get this done. But anyhow, press down on the brake and then turn starter, starter switch, and I hear the beep every time. So that tells me that the brake switch is working, the blade engagement switch is working and the ignition switch is working and all the wiring is continuous so uh, when I get the new starter and the new starter solenoid in uh, I should be good to go okay so here's what I think happened uh, I bought this used and it wouldn't start and uh, first of all it wouldn't even get power to the starter uh, jump start to the starter and it wouldn't completely turn uh, through the compression stroke so anyhow I set that aside ordered a new starter and started working on why I couldn't uh, get it to start with the key and that turned out to be a bad solenoid and also while I pulled the solenoid out I found that the battery terminal was fried and uh, only just like two strands so it had cooked the uh, the battery terminal and it also had cooked the uh, solenoid. So I think they were having trouble getting it started, getting it through the compression stroke, and eventually uh, burned up the starter and burned up the wire and the solenoid. And that's, that's uh, why it wouldn't start. But I checked all the rest of the wiring and the, the brake pedal switch is good. The uh, blade clutch is good. And so the only thing that was really wrong was the uh, solenoid was burned up and the, the uh, battery terminal to the solenoid was, was fried. So I got those replaced and now it still will not go through uh, a full uh, compression stroke. So uh, I think the original problem is uh, the valves need to oh, got that off, ended up snapping one of the screws off. I don't know why it was in there so tight that I just gave it a half a turn and it snapped right off. So and next I gotta get the spark plug out so I can find top dead center and then we'll go 
get my feeler gauges and start doing some adjustments. Okay, so I see that's the exhaust. Okay, here comes the intake. And now we should be going decompression. And I need to get the screwdriver and uh, find top dead center. Okay, so I've got, uh, got that loosened up. Uh, intake is supposed to be between 3 and 5. I'm going to use 4. And it is way too tight. So let's back it off. Back it off. That's better. Okay. Let's see, where's my wrench? I've got a Torx in the middle that you'd use it. Tighten it down and lock it. See if it's still. Yeah, that's still four. And the top one's supposed to be uh, between five and seven. I'm going to go with with uh, six. And that one's also a little tight. So loosen it up just a bit. That's about right. Get my Torx in there and lock it. <clears throat> and make sure it's still there. Yeah, okay. Okay, the uh, new solenoid is a piece of crap. I uh, got it off of Amazon. It's the $9.97 special, super cheap. Uh, however, it uh, I used it twice and now the the uh, contacts are, are welded and it runs all the time. The starter can't disengage because it's uh, the uh, solenoid won't let go. So anyhow I'm going to change it and I am of the strong opinion that Craftsman put this in a very bad place. So once I get it out of here I am going to run new cables and new wires and I am going to move that solenoid to right here next to the starter where it belongs and uh, I think it'll probably run a lot better too. I'm going to run uh, 2 watt gauge wire from the battery up to here and I'm going to leave the original wire in alone and just uh, uh, run an extra wire up here to pick the solenoid and, and get the starter. Also uh, this original starter uh, it hasn't got what it takes to spin this thing through a compression stroke. I've adjusted the valves the best I could and uh, still won't spin it. So I've got a uh, stronger, uh, or I, I say stronger, uh, the, the ad says it'll run up to a t uh, 24 horse Briggs and Stratton and this is a 17 and a half so it should spin it okay. So anyhow that's the chores as soon as the parts you get here move this all the way up here, replace it with a new starter, run some extra cables, extra heavy duty cables, and hopefully we get this thing spun up. One more annoying thing that, uh, about this, there's a lot of annoying things about this motor. Uh, first of all, flat tire, the valve stem just broke right off. I was sitting out in the driveway and had a flat tire, so I went and put a new one on. Uh, the most annoying thing is you cannot back up as long as the blade is running. And I searched online and I found out that there's a switch on the shifter that says, uh, hey, you're in reverse, and it goes over and tells the blade thing to shut that motor off. And I found the cable. It's right up there. You can see that I pulled the wire off. I should be able to go in reverse now with the blade running. Uh, I guess I did that because somebody ran over a kid, uh, and uh, I don't have any kids. I'm on my lawn by myself, so I don't have to worry about it. Okay, we got us a new starter from Amazon, and uh, it was supposed to 
drive a starter Briggs and Stratton up to, I think it's a 24 horse. This is a 17 and a half. And the original starter is having a terrible time getting it to, through the compression stroke. I've already reset the valves the way they recommend, so that uh, that's not the problem. I think the starter's just too weak to do it. But on top of that, I've changed the solenoid from in the back to an automotive solenoid. And instead of these little wimpy cable like this that got burnt into in the back, I put in this monster uh, cables and another monster cable for ground. So all the current that's available to battery should be going into this starter. I really don't like that nylon gear and chances are they didn't like it either because uh, they they uh, predicting a premature failure because they send you another one. So I'm going to keep this old starter around because that's a metal gear and I may just uh, if this fails I'm going to use that one instead. Like I mentioned, I'm using this 2 watt gauge wire. Uh, it goes all the way back to the battery. It goes from the starter uh, bracket down to the frame, from the frame directly to the battery. And on the positive side of this, I'm going to use uh, the same 2 gauge wire. And it goes to the solenoid. That's a Ford solenoid, not a Craftsman and that goes straight back to the battery same two gauge wire uh, right here goes all the way back to the battery so every bit of current that's available at the starter should show up right here or at the battery should show up right here okay let's do the test now before uh, i button it all up and put it back together let's go up here to the choke the brake is locked down I like this absolutely no hesitation from that starter so I think I'm done uh, I think it's gonna be a good motor or mower after all uh, I had my doubts when I first brought it home the original starter was spinning backwards for some reason I think somebody took it apart and put it back together wrong so it was spinning backwards I repaired that but it didn't have enough power to spin this thing around and the recommendation is to go set the, the valves if that's what the problem is. I set the valves, at, both valves are set at four thousandths and uh, it still had trouble cranking around. So that's when I got the idea of doubling up on the, the uh, cable thickness. That's gauge two wire all the way back to the battery and I, oh. Tell you what, they got more money than me to burn on firecrackers. Anyhow, I changed the two gauge wire uh, because the original, I guess they had tried to start it over and over and over again, and it burnt the wire in two in the back. It also burned up the uh, starter solenoid, and so I decided when I replace the solenoid, I'm going to move it from the back to the front so it's easier to work on, and also uh, I'm going to change it from a Craftsman uh, scooter type solenoid to a real automotive solenoid. So that's a Ford solenoid down there. So uh, every bit of the power coming from the battery is delivered to the starter. And that seems to be it. Let's try this one more time. No doubt. Doesn't that sound like a, a Ford firing up? <laughs> I think I'm done. Bye.